Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be taking you through my top 10 authors of all time. So this was inspired by a video that Mara from Books Like Woe made, I will link to that below. And basically she listed out her top 10 favourite authors and it got me thinking, I, I know who my top 10 most read authors are, but um, that doesn't necessarily make them my favourite. So we are going to go through my top 10 and uh, in reverse order, start with number 10. Okay, so in at number 10 we have J.K. Rowling. This is illustrated with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And really, you know, I feel like I have to include Rowling because just with my generation in general, she was just such an undeniable influence on our reading. I mean, I, you know, I read all the Harry Potter books as a kid. I've reread them here and there throughout the years. I'm not like a huge fan, but I would say I'm a fan. I don't necessarily like her as a person, I, I don't think, but um, I mean, just for the Harry Potter series, I feel like it would be an injustice not to include her. So number 10, JK Rowling. In at number nine, we have George Orwell. So this is Down and Out in Paris and London. I've read most of his books now. I think I'm missing one or two. Favorites include, obviously, Animal Farm and 1984. Homage to Catalonia was great as well. Uh, Burmese Days. Um, this was great actually, Down and Out in Paris and London as well. I like how sometimes he writes novels that are based on the real world and sometimes he literally writes sort of non-fiction stuff, uh, you know, as is the case in, in this book and also in uh, hom a Homage to Catalonia. So yeah, George Orwell, number nine. In at number eight we have Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is the sign of the four. I've also, oh, well I've read all of the Sherlock Holmes stuff. I've read uh, The Lost World and then I've read a few of his other books. So he's also written some sort of almost like military history books, um, some short story collections, that sort of thing. And I'm sort of slowly working my way through his back catalogue. He did develop some weird beliefs towards the end of his life and kind of started believing in fairies and stuff, which is kind of strange. But um, yeah, you know, big fan of Arthur Conan Doyle and I, th I think it's really him who got me into sort of the murder mystery genre and then I read Agatha Christie later but uh, spoiler alert, she may be on this list. At number seven, we have Roald Dahl. This is the BFG. My favourite as a kid was actually George's Marvelous Medicine. I enjoyed Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator was pretty good as well. The Witches used to really scare me. So, yeah, I kind of worked through a fair few of his books as a kid. Then as an adult, I have actually read some of his uh, stories for adults. I've also read Boy and Going Solo, which are his um, autobiographies. He actually used to live about five miles away from here in Great Missenden. And there's a Roald Dahl museum that at some point I want to want to go visit for sure. But uh, yeah, Roll Dahl in at number seven. Okay, number six we have Charles Bukowski. Now Bukowski was a poet and a prose writer. He wasn't the nicest of people. He was basically an alcoholic, womanizing, uh, gambling addict, but he did, he could write, you know? So, and also I've always, fa I mean, there's a, there's an ice cream van. Okay, it's gone. So yeah, Bukowski wasn't the greatest of people, but because he was dead before I started reading him, I sort of find it easier to, I don't know, bridge that gap between, you know, um, the, the, uh, the art and the artist. So yeah, I would definitely recommend Bukowski. He has this writing style that's kind of quite brutal and blunt, but also very poetic at times as well. This is a collection of his poetry, so I think the best thing to do is to read out one of his poems quickly. I'll try and find a short one. It is not much. I suppose like others, I have come through fire and sword, love gone wrong, head on crashes, drunk at sea, and I have listened to the simple sound of water running in tubs and wished to drown, but simply couldn't bear the others carrying my body down three flights of stairs to the round mouths of curious biddies. The psyche has been burned and left us senseless. The world has been darker than lights out in a closet full of hungry bats, and the whiskey and wine entered our veins when blood was too weak to carry on, and it will happen to others, and our few good times will be... And it will happen to others, and our few good times will be rare, because we have a critical sense and are not easy to fool with laughter. Small gnats crawl our screen, but we see through to a wasted landscape and let them have their moment. We only ask for leopards to guard the th our thinning dreams. I once lay in a white hospital for the dying and the dying self, where some god pissed a rain of reason to make things grow, only to die. Where on my knees I prayed for light, I prayed for light, and praying crawled like a blind slug into the web where threads of wind stuck against my mind, and I died of pity, for man, for myself, on a cross without nails, watching in fear as the pig belches in his sty, farts, blinks, and eats. So this is uh, the people look like flowers at last, and yeah, that's Charles Bukowski at number six. 
And number five, we have Graham Greene. This is his collected essays. I don't even know if I necessarily have favourite Graham Greene books because I've been reading him on and off for sort of ten years now. I actually discovered him because his short story, The Destructors, or Destructors, was in Donnie Darko, and I thought it sounded interesting as a story. So I grabbed his 21 stories and read that. Uh, I do like things like Travels with My Aunt, The Quiet American, Our Man in Havana, some of his sort of more light spy fiction. He kind of distinguished his works between some of them are novels and some of them are entertainments and it's really his entertainments I love more because uh, his novels he tends to be thought of more as like a Catholic novelist even though he is Catholic and he is a novelist but he's not a Catholic novelist if that makes sense. But yeah, Graham Greene number five. And number four we have Philip Pullman who wrote Northern Lights and the His Dark Materials trilogy which is what I always credit as my favourite book of all time. This is the, sut uh, the Subtle Knife here. I have read a bunch of his other stuff as well. So I've also read his uh, Sally Lockhart series which was great. I read uh, The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ recently which was pretty good. The Firework Maker's Daughter, I enjoyed that. So yeah, Philip Pullman in at number four. Not quite my favourite author but uh, he is up there. At number three, we have Agatha Christie, and this is After the Funeral. Everyone knows that I'm a big Agatha Christie fan. I've probably read maybe 30, 40 of her books now. I tend to prefer Miss Marple to Poirot, actually, although I do enjoy them both. And uh, yeah, she's one of those authors that for sure I'm just going to slowly work my way through, and she's going to be one of my all-time favourite authors for all time but not my favourite. And number two, we have Stephen King, and this is represented by The Green Mile. Again, people know I'm a Stephen King fan, and he's another one of those authors. I'm slowly working my way through all of his books. I am getting there. I think I've probably read more of his books than Agatha Christie's, although I, I couldn't swear by that. And yeah, I, I haven't really read any of his books that I haven't liked. There are some I've enjoyed less than others. I'm actually currently reading Bag of Bones, and I'm not particularly enjoying it, but... Um, yeah, definitely worth a read from, from me, Stephen King number two. And so, drum roll please. In at number one is Terry Pratchett. And this is Snuff. He's my most read author. I just love his stuff. I've read pretty much all of the Discworld books, most of his non-Discworld books as well. And I've even worked through a lot of stuff like the Discworld calendar and things like that that are kind of sort of spin-offs or whatever. So, uh, so yeah, Terry Pratchett, for sure, my favourite author, I would say. Even though I don't I don't read him as much as I used to. I've, I've actually been rereading re uh, re him for the rereadathon and really enjoying that. But obviously with his new books, there are only going to be a finite number of them. So I'm trying to take my time with them and, uh, you know, make them last. But yeah, Terry Pratchett in at number one. So there we have it. Those are my ten favourite authors of all time. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of this list, whether you're surprised by it at all. Let me know if you've read any of these authors as well. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.